サウンドボルテックスエクシードギアファイナルトラックHey guys, it's Speedy Potato. So, this controller has been a long time coming. Previously, with、uh, version 4, I was just aiming for a basic mini sound Voltex controller. I was really happy with that design, but as time passed, I couldn't really keep up with all the orders since I had to spend so long soldering each and every one. Version 5 is different, it's、uh, redesigned from the scratch using a fully assembled PCB, which reduces assembly time significantly.、Um, the firmware is open source, unlike u n c o n and Game O2. This is the top plate. I've already put stabilizers into it. And this is the star of the show, the CNC aluminum chassis. It's something I really, really wanted,、um, even with its high cost. What it does is that it makes the controller stay put when you're playing, and it just gives the controller such a better and a higher quality feel.、Uh, as I set things up here, I'll talk a little bit.、Um, but yeah, this is what I think is the best pocket sound Voltex controller that I think you could ever need. I really、uh, wanted to show you this,、um, how this is assembled in case you need to you know, service a controller with new encoders or switches later down the line. And just wanted to give a little bit of insight to you know, each design decision that's made. So, for example, with the aluminum chassis, I'm able to put、um, threads into the actual body itself. So, I don't need to use any more、um, nylock nuts. I can directly screw them in,、uh, screw the feet in into the chassis, which simplifies assembly. And then when I turn
turn it over, um, you can see that we now have socketed encoders. So as with all mechanical parts, um, eventually things will um, slowly start to you know, no longer work. And I mean, these encoders are rated for like 100,000 cycles, which is crazy for how small these are. But um, I've heard from Mon and I've heard from others that, you know, of course, eventually things will break. And with the soldered encoders, it's kind of a pain to desolder those. So it's just better to have them socketed. And um, I did borrow this idea from Mon, so credits to him. But yeah, um, in the future, if even if I'm not around, you can go ahead and source your own Born's EC16 encoders and get them replaced, you know, five, maybe 10 years down the line, whenever you need to get them replaced. And the same thing with the switches. They are, of course, hot swap again. Originally, V4 was not hot swap. But hot swap lets you go ahead and, you know, change any switches if you wanted to customize or if you wanted to replace, you know, a faulty switch. These are Gatoron Milky Pro Yellows, so I don't expect them to have any issues at all. It's reputable and it's a really known good switch. And um, normally I put them all in at once. The start button switch is a little bit finicky to get in sometimes, so this is a little bit easier, but you do risk bending a leg, which you'll see later. Yep, so then once you put it in, you go ahead and you screw on the top plate. And then I spent a little bit extra getting these low profile um, M3 screws so that, you know, the top plate is fairly flush across the whole, whole top. And then of course to secure it, I can um, go ahead and put the included nuts onto the encoders. And this is a lot more secure um, way of fastening the encoders. I've seen um, some V4s, you know, people put them in their backpack and then like the whole top of the encoder comes off because it's only held in by, you know, folded metal clips. So this is another mounting method and should definitely be more durable and hopefully it doesn't ever happen because you'll have it in a case as well. And then we put on the knobs. And then these knobs, um, compared to V4, they're the same angle as Arcade now. And these are also a little bit bigger. So these, uh, I was able to fit 25 millimeter knobs onto version 5 versus 22 millimeter diameter on version 4. And it does help the feel. And of course they're faceted because I really, really like um, that texture that the arcade uses. Printing out the keycaps now. The keycaps are basically the same except for the FX, which are now 2.25U, uh, which was suggested to me by Tokaku, and I agree that definitely should have been a little bit longer. But yeah, I run through the test. As you can see, button C is not working, and we'll go ahead and fix that now. Yep, and as you can see, that switch leg got bent. So let's do a little quick bend back. We should be good to go. And that's it. Thanks for listening, and yeah, thanks for all the support over the past year. I'll see you again soon.